Well, I guess we can just get started then. One thing that I notice about your work, uh, Gus, when I look at all of these wonderful little works in this room, is that you're a cubist in, in some ways. Everything is a block. Even the people are blocks, the buildings are blocks, the ships are blocks. Everything is a block. Well, they're geometric, but I don't think of them as blocks. Uh, I, my work is very two-dimensional versus uh, any feeling of perspective, but I mean, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a surface person, and I, I like to do walls, for instance, and the mm -hmm. walls are very two-dimensional. There's no there's slight recess at a doorway or a window, but uh, for the most part, I'm just uh, a 2D guy. <laughs> well, I think that the, the sculpture right here is a very good example of that because you have a lot of flat surfaces to work on and this one happens to be a checkerboard. There's also, I think, a lot of humor in your work and I don't know if you understand that or would admit to it or not. Uh, I would admit to it, as occasionally, <laughs> but they're not all uh, necessarily it's uh, Carol. humorous or witty. Carol. Or that sometimes, especially when I get into faces and uh, like the little uh, cigar guy over there in the sarg cigar box called Stogie, mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, obviously that's one of the most humorous ones in the show. Yes. Uh, yeah. And he's a very blocky sort of guy, though, very rectangular. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but that's true of, of most mm -hmm. of your people and things. I'd like to go back to this one. With little projections on mm -hmm. several of the floors. Mm -hmm. But uh, the checkerboard thing is meant to be sometimes windows and sometimes checkerboard. It's not, uh, it's, there's no, uh, it's, it's however the viewer wants to take it. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm not pushing one direction. I know this is one of the older or the oldest piece in the show. Most of these mm -hmm. things were done within the last 18 months or so. This one's a little bit older. Um, but it has, a, again, a lot in common with a lot of your work, and that is, again, the surface. You talk a lot about your surfaces, and you put a, a special care into them, especially to make them look worn and used. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, a brand new wall isn't as interesting as an old wall, <laughs> <laughs> at least to me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, some people like flawless walls. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. you know, in, in, an, in, an, in, an, in a piece on an interior decoration, you know, the walls would be beautiful. Yeah. and creamy and blank. No, the old walls have always intrigued me. You know, city walls, especially in New York City, near where I grew up, and uh, the walls, uh, they're, they're, New York City never sleeps. There's always buildings being torn down, and there's other buildings being raised, and uh, some of the walls that are in process of being torn down or being built gives you lots of or gave me a lot of material to work with, and uh, one of the, it just in, inspired me a lot. And well, we talked a lot, a lot in the past about how when a building is turned down, sometimes you see people's lives. If it was an apartment building, there might be a, a square that's like a apartment house green, and there might be a striped wallpaper, right. and all of those things are left, and they're all of a sudden exposed on the outside. Right, little is stairwells it, going up. Going up. And, uh, just a specific piece. I was thinking of a specific piece would be shadowed sidewalk wall, which has a truck in it. Would be one of those. There are so many to choose from. But shadowed sidewall, I like because again, it has a very realistic um, touch in it with the red little red pickup truck, which itself has Can more than one. Right? No, we mm -hmm. got the got the grid there. Uh, Yeah. We're getting it. It worked perfect in rehearsal, folks. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, showing up. Now. Oh, hooray. Yeah. That one's sort of fun. I mean, that one is, is one of your more, I guess, realism type pieces. Right, very close to realism, but uh, it's entirely invented. I mean, I had mm. no photograph or nothing to work from, not even the sketch. I just, it kind of evolved as I put it down the first had a, a black uh, central object, mm -hmm. kind of a square of dark, and then I added the surrounding treatments 
the, and, and the last thing to go on there was the, the little red truck with the white door. So uh, some, sometimes I work totally from the sketch and it's, uh, uh, you, you know, it goes right through the process and uh, comes out with sort of what a, the idea I started with. But this one was more of an impromptu evolution. I really like it that the, as well as the wall on the side of the building has patches of things that used to be there, whether, whether they were billboards or, or walls that are from another house, as well as a new door or a different colored door on the truck. Because sometimes you see that in Florida where somebody's yeah. side gets bashed in and they go get another door, but it's from a different model, different color. Right. So that's sort of fun. I also like the way that that central square of the building is, it is shadow wall. Mm -hmm. Instead of making it in the bright sunlight, the border around it becomes a thing in itself, very colorful and bright. And then you have this sort of black hole in the middle sort of sucking, sucking us in into the building. Let's look also, I think, at uh, side wall 10, which is another side wall. Side wall 10, I have heard sold today, so yeah, there it is. if you didn't buy it out there, you're, you're too late. And there it is. Again, we have sort of the same thing. We have this edge around the, the outside, but this side wall is more blending in with the atmosphere behind it. And it's a little bit more like that torn down building with all of the different rooms in there. When did you first see a building like that? Oh, uh, that's hard to say. I mean, uh, <laughs> It was probably not even New York City, which was my major inspiration, but it uh, might have been Nyack, New York, somewhere, uh, which is the little town that I went to high school in, and that uh, they also would tear things down occasionally. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Are there uh, big buildings in Nyack like that? Uh, there's like uh, three-story buildings, a few of them, mm -hmm. and mostly two-story. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a real old New England town. It's very, uh, it's mostly antique dealers now and uh, restaurants because mm. uh, all the businesses have moved out to the malls. Yeah, and, yeah. Do you think that there's something nostalgic about your buildings when you paint them? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, it's mostly about uh, just composition, you know, mm -hmm. doing. Uh, formal things, just uh, line, shape, color. Uh. That's true, but they, I mean, you know, you're saying all that, but they seem very personal. They seem very personal to you. They have, in mm -hmm. fact, a personality uh, of their own. And I think that's, again, where the, the humor comes in. I mean, I don't think it's ha-ha funny, this particular yeah. piece, but it does have this sort of worn around the edges, sort of scruffy, sort of like some people you know, but they have a lot of character. <laughs> They're yeah. good for a joke once in a while, but usually you just be, enjoy being around them. Yeah. Uh, let's look at something that's sort of a transition piece, I think. It is called block build. Block build. And I think you're, you know, we, we sort of started with the more realistic one with the red truck then we're going to, to one that's a little bit more abstract, and now we go to something that is really, really abstract and yeah. not nearly as colorful. Uh, there isn't a figure ground thing that we saw in the other thing going on. So what's going on here? Uh, well, it's uh, jumping off the buildings in a way. It's uh, showing just uh, a composition based on rooms that were on a on a wall, but uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, just going a step further towards abstraction, which is uh, a fun thing to do and, and it makes a, a somewhat more powerful image than, than actually going to the realism. But, yeah, the, but yeah, both the, are fun to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't want to just go in one direction. I like to go several different areas when mm -hmm. I'm working. Some people like to repeat themselves a lot, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you mentioned to me that the way that you started a lot of these little works is by using a box of scrap papers th that have different, different types and textures and colors of paper, laying them right on top of the panel or the canvas and mm -hmm. moving them around and looking at them. And is that something that happened with that one? 
I think so, probably. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't remember specifically mm -hmm. on each piece. Uh, but yeah, I do a lot of that uh, juggling of pieces of paper onto the panels that are going to be co go down and as a collage. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, I don't know, exploration. It's like the title of the show, uh, Angular Explorations. And uh, that's what I do. That one I still, since it's coming out from the bottom and there's space above the top, I still sort of want to read it as something, but maybe not mm -hmm. a building. Yeah, well, it's going towards, uh, slightly towards the, some of the other ones in the show, the boxes. There's mm -hmm. two uh, images of boxes in the show. And you might be able to call one of those up. Yeah, I think it was called, let's see, the box one. I'll just turn around here. Yeah, that one's still here. It's right? called... Open Box. You, you know, I thought you titled these so you could remember the titles easily. <laughs> well, the other, one was, the other one was Open Box 2. So. Oh, Open Box 2. Well, let's just look at we're... Open Box, which we have right on the screen here. Yeah, but you know, that, that one is an open box. It has an open top. How long has it have these Open Box series? Uh, those are just on? this year, actually. I mean, I uh, hadn't done boxes before. But the way the boxes started was I had a large, uh, maybe four foot by five foot painting, and I, I needed a feature in it. And so I made this uh, very hard line geometric shape of a box right on the uh, canvas as part of the image. Then I worked it in and distressed it a little so it doesn't look brand new. So it became part of the painting. But uh, then I, when I was doing these little works for this show, I, uh, I so you got an opportunity and I was looking for more material, more things to paint, and I, I looked at the big painting and said, well, I can use that. And so a few more paintings evolved with the boxes. You think we'll be seeing more and more boxes in the coming months? Oh, I never know. I, I don't <laughs> never want to know commit about myself that. to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right on camera with all of these witnesses, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Well, go back to the one uh, that we just saw for just a minute, because it, it is called block, block Build. Because one of the things that I think it looks like, because it's coming up from the bottom. See, I'm like a bulldog when I get on something. Uh -huh. Um, it's coming up from the bottom, and there's a little bit of a darker line down toward, toward the bottom. And it reminds me, it, it looks like it's going toward one of your freighters, one of your cargo ships. In fact, this just could be the cargo up on top. Yeah, well, I see that too. I mean, yeah, but, uh, but it's not actually a ship. But it, well, yeah, maybe if I not it actually a, little, a if ship. If I push it a little further, I could have put a stack on it and then... Uh, but those cargo ships, the newer ones that you've done before with mm -hmm. all of those uh, container ships, right. they don't have any stacks. They just have boxes and boxes. Well, they usually have a stack too. I always had to have a stack. <laughs> <laughs> even, even just for aesthetic reasons, you would have yeah. to have a stack. Because I know you've done those container ships too, which seem to me right up your alley. Yeah, that's the better part of the boat is the stack. The stack makes it a boat. I would think so, and, 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 and with that, let's see Red Freighter, which is one of my favorites in the show. And it's coming up soon. There we go. Oh yeah. I, I really like that one. Again, you know, a lot of your things, again, it's, it's boxy. I mean, what's the difference between that and an apartment building, that one has a stack, an apartment building has a chimney, right? Yeah, I mean, that's why I do them, because it's uh, very much like an apartment building. There's more walls, I mean, a ship has uh, mm -hmm. huge sides, you know, bigger than a lot of buildings, and uh, it's just another flat surface that I can deal with and uh, cover some of the same concerns that I've had with, with the walls of uh, buildings. It, uh, but it gives me another little, uh, direction, uh, variation. The, the, the little red freighter ha actually has smoke coming out of the stack. So. Yeah, I, it's I, really yeah. cute. I think it's really <laughs> cute. It also, if you look at the top, it looks like it has two little heads 
with their little noses facing in different directions, sort of like a, a cartoon, like mm -hmm. Crazy Cat or somebody. Do you ever see those faces? I mean, sometimes uh, I'll paint something and, and somebody will say, oh, I love that face in there. And I'll say, what face? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see a face no. in there? Do you ever plant them a little bit? Because they look a little like your uh, Try faces. not to. If it starts to look too much like a face, I'll, I'll move something around. Well, uh, those don't look too much like a face. No. Uh, tell us about, um, I know you've been doing ships for about 15 years now, mm -hmm. because you told me that the other day. And tell us what the inspiration for those ships are. Uh, well, I, uh, yes. I grew up in Havistar, New York, and there was a, what they called the mothball fleet, and there were a bunch of freighters that were left over from the Second World War, and they were sitting there rusting and turning bright orange and red, and uh, some of them were gray. And uh, my father, who was also an artist, uh, uh, did a lot of watercolors, and he did several of the mothball ships or, or he, he would select a couple of the ships and then paint them uh, and he did a very nice job. He's an excellent watercolorist and uh, so that's part of my inspiration to do boats and ships. Uh, I also had an, an uncle, two uncles in the Merchant Marines in, uh, during the Second World War and uh, you should have seen these uh, mothball fleets sitting there in the Hudson River. There was probably two, three hundred ships, they're all tied together like a big raft and they uh, left them there for maybe 20 years and they finally dragged them down the Hudson, down into New Jersey somewhere and recycled them into, mm -hmm. you know, torn up metal. Uh, hmm. that, sounds, that sounds sort of neat. You yeah. must have liked to go out, did you, did you look at them as a kid or did you oh, just, a lot, yeah? yeah. 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 The next, next town up the Hudson was Haverstraw, New York. That's where they were moored. Well, I think that that one is really nice. Let's see a uh, tilt. Tipped. I'm sorry. Tipped. Tipped, as long as we're on the subject of boats or ships. I'm sure your merchant marine uncles would not have wanted you to call those <laughs> boats. Uh, no, those no. are ships. Sunny. Well, ships are boats and boats are ships as far as I know. I know as far as you're concerned, but <laughs> yeah. Because they look a little like toy boats. That particular one especially looks like a toy boat. And it is tipped. Why did you decide to do one listing? Everything is uh, usually right up and down. Well, for a while we lived on Cape Cod and every once in a while a big uh, ship would come and get uh, go aground in a storm or something. And you, these things would be sitting there on the beach kind of tipped off to a side and they uh, Quite striking to see one of these monsters sitting on your in, in the shallow water right on the beach almost. And, mm -hmm. uh, often there'd be people gathered around and uh, viewing them. And it was, it, it was always an event that was, the one that comes to mind right away was called the Eldia. And it was up there near, uh, I think it was Orleans, Massachusetts, right mm -hmm. on the, the beach there. And we went a couple times to take a look at it and take some pictures. And that's where tipped comes from. Does it, is it because the, the tide goes out and they start touching the bottom or something? I don't know. They lose power or what happens. You know, uh. There's always a, an investigation and they find out. What <laughs> did, but, but I don't remember the details of what the crisis was. One of the things that you told me when I interviewed you for the 32963 paper is that um, you liked the smaller sizes because you could do a lot of them quickly, you could explore a lot of ideas quickly. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that worked with this particular show where you were, you actually made most of these things for the show. Did you I learn did. anything new? Uh, well, I learned that they don't always come out as quickly as you might, <laughs> as I might <laughs> hope. But, uh, <laughs> They are fun to do, and uh, I have always made some smaller works uh, to go with my larger works. And, uh, but this was a challenge to do this many uh, all at once, in that uh, you know you have to keep uh, keep it fresh and find new images to do. Mm -hmm. and so it was a challenge. It was fun to do, though. Some of your subjects, the open boxes and ships and things, I know that you keep a lot of sketchbooks mm -hmm. and they're not in any order. They could be from any year. You just pick one up and you start sketching or you might even 
do you actually uh, tear things out of newspapers or magazines and put them in, or do you sketch them in from those pictures? Uh, most often I sketch them in, but I do do a few little clippings and glue it in there. But for the most part, they're either pencil or pen, and uh, I've done them for years, and uh, mo most of them will never come to be uh, final works in a, in a larger media. But they're fun to go through when I am looking for subject matter, and uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's a it's like a little diary of images that have come across my come th come through my vision. You know, you see, if I see it in a magazine or a newspaper or a uh, book, whatever. So they could yeah. be advertisements or news stories mm -hmm. or oh yeah, it's got anything. And it's often not uh, there's not a an art-related thing, or it's not a photograph that's considered an art photograph. It's just uh, sometimes it's just a detail in a photograph, and I'll just see a, uh, some verticals and some horizontals, and say, "Well, that's I got I got to use some of that." <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you've uh, sometimes done uh, topical things like portraits of politicians and things like that, and of course, there's one topical picture in this show, and that's the Black Lives Matter. Yes. And was that perhaps something that you saw, well, I guess, you know, we've been seeing TV and you can't get away from the news and the different um, protests and cries for change. Yeah, well, uh, I uh, just wanted to make a statement as to my own feelings that, that black lives do matter, and very much so. and. Uh, I depicted it in a way that was as if someone had put a large poster on a wall somewhere and had written the words, and uh, so it's it's a, a projection from my work on uh, with walls, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought it all tied in nicely. It it really does. I think that um, it it really has your feel with that wall back there with a a poster affixed to it, and then a man in the front, or a, a person in the front. Sometimes you can tell if your people are men, and sometimes you can tell if they're women, but in, in a work like Greyfellow, mm -hmm. which we will see next, you will see how this blocky, blocky thing that Gus has going uh, appears even when he goes in, into portraits and humans. And this is really a wonderful work. I know that I think it's one of your favorites in the show. I know it is mine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one of my favorites that's under glass. And uh, it, uh, I would not call it a portrait, though. I don't think I've <laughs> ever come across someone quite with that look. But uh, it, uh, it's one of those things evolved from the pieces of paper that I had on my, my work board. And, uh, and these few two old pieces of, of ratty paper, and uh, it just started to be like a head, and, and I went on from there. And I don't know why the guy wound up with a black nose, but it seemed quite striking. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it was going to be an it's ear, and, and you just and the other one <laughs> fell off or blew away or something. Yeah. I like that you use a lot of newsprint, and you you lightly go over it with some sort of a pigment, like a white or a or a brown or green or whatever color, and you can still see the words. Right. It's a little like, a, what do they call that, a pamplicest, where you can see the words that were, were there, they get scratched off and then something else put on. Again, mm -hmm. it's sort of like that idea of your walls that get torn down and then repainted and scratched up and torn down yeah. and repainted again. You know, I thought that was a portrait. I have to say I thought it was a portrait <laughs> because, because I thought it was um, the, the, the Duke of Urbino, mm -hmm. right? I know that Did you look, yeah. you look that up, right? I did, but I knew the painting anyway. The, yeah. The guy with the, he's got warts and a big bulb, you know. No, no, that's a different uh, oh, one. No, no, no. This is a, this is a, a pure, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the, the very famous man who did it. But it, the Duke and Duchess of Urbino were done on panels that were just a little bit bigger, actually, mm -hmm. than that particular work over there. I think they're like 12 by 9 in inches or something. And th they're shown in, in stark profile. And the Duke, 
he's facing the other way and he has this, you, you got to look this up because he has this conical red hat on that looks just like a rectangle. Yeah, well, I'll do that. And, and his nose is notched because, you know, he was a, he was a, a guy that mm. went out and led the troops in battle and he was the first one to get his nose notched <laughs> by a sword. Yeah. And he looks a lot like that. And you said, no, that's not a, that's not a duke, you know. But you did like the idea of that nose being so different. Oh, yeah, being smashed. And, yeah. Being smashed or maybe <laughs> being removable. Right. An artificial nose. An artificial yeah. nose. I think so. Maybe you need to have a little string or something that ties behind his ears. And I don't know why we call him a he either. It could be a she. I always think of him as a he. You That's, think of him as a he? Yeah. Well, let's look at Feather Hat and tell me what, what you think of Feather. Who is it wearing that feather hat? There you are. Yeah, and I, th I think I like this one even better than the last one. Hmm. As I love hats. Another black nose. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I, I thought, I, but you could also, you know, after seeing Greyfellow, I want to read that as a profile also. But I oh. don't know which way that head would be looking. Yeah, with a black ear. With a black ear <laughs> and that that hat, and again, you know, we, we we've been talking about buildings, we've talking about boats, and boats that become buildings, buildings that become boats, and people that become buildings, yeah. because this looks a lot like a roof with a little window under it, and then you have that little plume right on top that could be a plume of smoke, mm -hmm. like coming out of the chimney. You mean the building is kind of floating there? It's kind of floating. It's like uh, it's on a stalk. On a stalk, <laughs> yeah. or maybe on a chicken leg, like Baba Yaga or something like that. But do you think? I mean, now I know when you're doing this, you're not thinking this looks like a building. Uh, no, it was, <laughs> it was never a building for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do relate. The, the, I'm working in the same manner as I do if I'm doing a building. So mm -hmm. I'm working with flat surfaces and uh, angles and cubism, oh, yeah. sort of. But, uh, and there it is smack dab again, mm -hmm. right in the middle with uh, some atmosphere around it. That in, in this case looks a little like a sky or a, a, an open space or something right. like that. A backdrop. How, how soon did you know that you were going to put a feather on top? <clears throat> because that's the name of it is Feather Hat. I think I knew that pretty quickly with that one. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, I like a little, little tiny. What, what kind of hat do you call it? Little uh, like a pillbox. Pillbox hat with, with little feathers. I've done figures like that too, with uh, three-dimensional clay and also mm -hmm. wood. So it, it's a, a repeated theme. Yes, it's it's a, a very good theme too. And also, I <clears throat> I see that it's almost like. You know, stripes too. You know, like that person has had different rooms or different, maybe that's different areas of the mind because they're different colors or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, that, yeah. that this is the, the face you show the world and, and, and this is that. And, and the, the red part is the percentage of knowledge that's in that person's head or something. Yeah. I like the, the, all the information you bring to the image <laughs> because when I'm making them, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's compositional more. I'm not really thinking of people and... Uh. Well, sometimes I think an artist becomes so much themselves after a while that they forget about style. I mean, mm -hmm. they're putting themselves in whether they want to or not. I mean, you couldn't not... It would be an effort for you to paint in a different way. This comes naturally. Well, it would, yeah. At, uh, this, at this point. Yeah. I mean, I have, over the years, I've tried a few little portraits, like of my granddaughters, and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I stopped doing that because I'm not really that good at it. Jan actually made, my wife makes a better portrait than I do. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, Jan is back there exalting. I think he's saying To be a good portrait, it, it takes uh, a lot of commitment and a lot of uh, yeah, practice of that art form. It's not just something you can you know, do one portrait. Or... So here we go. You're on the mute. way an artist becomes more themselves as they mm -hmm. 
become more used to what they're doing as they get older and, and have, have hundreds yeah. of works under their belt that it becomes not effortless but it becomes yeah. something that you can't keep out is your mm -hmm. sense of humor or your personality yeah, out of these things. Kind of well, speaking of senses of humor, let's look at Pinocchio. Oh, Pinocchio, we know. Now, that Pinocchio. one is really nice. Um, how did you come up with, well, why did you want to do Pinocchio? Been watching too many political speeches? Is I don't know. Pinocchio is one of the ones in the show here that uh, is actually a replacement for one that sold and was taken away, so I brought in a few other pieces, and uh, he uh, he goes back away, so I don't really remember the origins too well. Uh, it uh, I, at first, I, the first time I've I've lettered it in the name above it, I've spelled Pinocchio wrong. I called <laughs> it one C, <laughs> so I had to go back and make space for the second C. But anyway, uh, he. Uh, I had these boxes, uh, and he's three dimensional, and he sits inside the box, and it's uh, they were these uh, uh, sand forms for for uh, was from the Navy Yard in Boston, and they had, they sold off all these old boxes that were made for making uh, uh, forms to pour in, uh, cast iron. And uh, so I had a bunch of those, and, and this one started to look like a little uh, puppet show uh, uh, playhouse. So I pushed it a little further and put a little figure in there, and that Pinocchio, it started to look like Pinocchio. I put a long nose on him, and there he was. So. Is he unique in your oeuvre? Uh, well, I, if you saw the, a lot of the works from that period, I, some of the other boxes were also made into things, but they didn't necessarily have little figures in them. They, uh, some were storefronts, and so they would be uh -huh. uh, like sort of the, uh, they were never uh, realistic, super realistic. They were mm -hmm. kind of uh, the way I work, you know, with the surfaces and the wall treatments and a, a similar thing to what I'm doing now, but, uh, but they were in three dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, shallow three dimension, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, I don't know. There's a nice uh, collage of a of a storefront at the, over at the museum now by Christo. I just love that. Oh piece. yes, yeah, yeah, that's really a nice one. Yeah, mm -hmm. Piero della Francesca. That's the one who did the Duke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was going to say it when I remembered it. Instead of waiting till I was asleep and waking up at two in the morning, yeah. so I should have done that. Um, so this is a, a little bit more realistic, but but certainly a caricature of Pinocchio. Did you used to did do puppets and stuff when you were a kid, or does this does this go back? Uh, some some we did some puppetry, and uh, uh, even after I was. Uh, grown up and an adult and married and everything, we made some puppets to entertain our children. And ah. uh, we had a little Punch and Judy set. And, and they, Punch and Judy were always great fun. But they're not very uh, politically correct nowadays because <laughs> Punch is whacking everyone in the head and <laughs> killing everyone. <laughs> so, How about your grandkids left it though, uh, and yeah. your children? And you'd see it on the streets and, and like Rome, and, and people just love it, you know, and the kids are enthralled by that kind of humor. But nowadays, I, you're not going to see it on TV with people running around, uh, at least for children's shows. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I don't think in maybe the past uh, 40 years, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, you know, the old Roadrunner shows, they were, those were pretty violent. Right. Yeah. Those were the days. Let's talk about just one more group and then let's go to some questions. Are we getting questions? If you haven't sent in a question on the question box, type it in. Please do that because I'm running out of things to ask and I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, now there is something that is sort of a hybrid between, I would say, architecture, tables, boxes, and people, and that is what you used to call the carry backs. And let's look at carry man, since there we have something, a man in the title. 
So what is, tell us about Carrie Mann. I mean, where's uh, the man there? The man, he's got two legs there. He's got one very thin leg. It's almost like a peg leg. Uh -huh. And then he's got a, a bar and the bar carries the uh, larger forms of a, mm -hmm. a, it's all very abstract, but it's, a, it's like chest and chest muscles and chest padding and, and, the, and the dark head that goes up the top. And uh, it's a... Uh, <laughs> you think I'm creative in, in interpreting these things. Yeah, well, it's, uh, <laughs> and there was a whole series of these carry back mm -hmm. figures and uh, some quite large and, uh, but uh, it... Uh, and sculptures too. Yeah, and I did some small ones in bronze that were also carry backs and the uh, and uh, and there's a couple of welded ones. Are the carrybacks so, always people? Some of them look like they're animals or horses. No, some are animals, absolutely. And I've done some, a dog even, but uh, but they're abstracted and they don't look too animalistic and they don't look too doggy. They look like uh, stick figure sculptures in a way. Uh, uh, yeah, I think let's look at uh, red legs then, and mm -hmm. and that'll be the last one, and then we'll see what kind of questions we have. I could talk all night, actually, but I Which think image? that we, uh, that's red legs. Red legs. Or you could do leg act if you find that first. Whichever one you find There's first. There's red legs. Yeah. You got red legs. So this is what you're talking about, where they become super simplified. Mm -hmm. And right. um, the, the thing that I like about this one, and also the other one that, that uh, we were mentioning, the leg act, but this is just fine, too. This almost looks like a bunch of guys in like a Greek play or a Greek wedding, holding each other's arms and dancing around. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one as well. So it almost looks a little bit like a sawhorse mm -hmm. type of structure, but they're very much human figures as well. Yeah, well, they're very much related to the carryback theme. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one, the red legs depicts maybe four or five people and just the legs and then the, mm -hmm. You don't see the upper bodies of these figures. It's mostly just the, you know, it's a shot of their legs, and uh, it just becomes a little more uh, becomes very leggy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I enjoy doing that, and it's uh, you know. Jump. Is the carry back uh, series finished, or do you think uh, so no, not at all. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll be doing some more of those uh, for sure because I like doing them in wood and uh, metal work when possible. Uh, I think that's sort of the essential Gus Miller, mm -hmm. you know, form, is that it can be interpreted in so many ways and uh, there's plenty of wall space to, to work on. Do we have any questions? Yes, so we have, um, I'll start with a comment, um, I think this is from the Gooches, and they say, I think Gus is being modest. He's a very capable, realistic illustrator. Uh -huh. So I wanted to share a compliment, and then we can get to some questions. Um, are Pinocchio's hands carved or clay? And also, why do you call your horse figures carrybacks? Well, there you go. Okay. Uh, well, first for Pinocchio, they are wood, and they're carved, and. Uh, Usually, I don't do much carving. I'm more of an assemblage uh, constructivist, but occasionally I have to make a hand. And anyway, his hands are carved. And the other question was, uh, where was it? Uh, carrybacks. Oh, the carrybacks. Yeah, they're called carrybacks because often I'll have items or uh, abstract forms sitting on the back of these uh, uh, carrybacks. So. I was just starting calling them carrybacks because, and carry, by calling them carrybacks, they can be either uh, humanistic or they can be animalistic. So, and they all kind of relate to each other. So carrybacks kind of fit the bill for describing that area of my work. Great. And then um, we were asked if you could talk about some of the faces on the wall behind you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. What? Let's talk about um, 
Do you have one? Uh, how about for the mask one, the uh, cigar, the stogie? Oh, yeah, stogie. We talked about that a little before. Yeah, I did before. mention them already. Yeah. Stogie. Uh, Stogie is a, an actual, well, the title is indicates that he's smoking his little cigar, and the little cigar uh, makes him a, a man, probably, but, although a few women smoke cigars. But <laughs> <laughs> he, and uh, the actual form that he's mounted on, the face is mounted on, is an actual cigar box that it has on the sides of it, which you can't see. There's a few of those little... Uh, blue uh, stamps that they put on cigar boxes as they come in from other countries such as Cuba or wherever they make them down to Central America too. And uh, so he's, uh, I don't know, he's where he came from. How did you come from. by the box? Did somebody give you a box uh, of cigars? People do give me the boxes. Actually one of the people that called in questions, Jim Gooch, gave me several uh -huh. cigar boxes because I guess he enjoys smoking the things. So. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but, <laughs> but I like the boxes. The boxes are terrific. And There's then, a question, is that snapper on the right side of Stokey? Snapper on the right side of Smokey. Let me see, let's see, let me see. There's a signature over there. Up here, that's paper face. Oh, paper face. Yeah. Paper face, face yellow, and patch heads. So face yellow, do we have that one? I think or so. Not fa or paper face. Face yellow is there because it's... Yeah. And patch heads. I'll put up patch heads. That's one of them. And was there a question about it? Uh, I think to talk about some of those things. Are, she meant uh, sandpaper. Sandpaper. We have paper face, but that doesn't look like, is paper face sandpaper? Oh, uh, there's some paper, there's uh, actually some sandpaper on stogie. Oh, okay. But not yeah. on paper face. I think she was asking if that's sandpaper on the, on the, um, on the right side of stogie. On yes. paper face. Yes. It is sandpaper. Do you have a, a picture of paper face? No, no, stogie. Stogie's the bottom of sandpaper. No. Maybe not. Let's see the sandpaper here. But there is on sandpaper the on Stogie. On Stogie. All right. Okay. Um, I have another question here for you. Do you work with a definite daily schedule? Very much no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, very erratic, and a lot of other things press in on a person's life. It's hard to, uh, if you have no, if you're not going to an office or a Place of business, it's, uh, you know, it's no way to. So how do you carve out time to make it work? Um, sporadically, I, I'm just, uh, I'm very unorganized. Uh, I'm all over the place. I can't uh, give you a specific answer to that question. You're very prolific though. I think people see all these things and, and think you must be at it 24 seven. Mm, well, it's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> when you go into your studio, usually, how long do you stay there? Or when you, you know, uh, it could be, it could be uh, one hour to five hours. You know, it could, uh, often I'm working late at night too. It's, a, it's, a, it's peace and quiet at night, and I, I will work from uh, say ten to midnight, and then go to bed. Or mm -hmm. Sometimes it even goes a little longer because you get into it. But, uh, and afternoons are more of my work time than mornings. Mornings I'm usually doing other things, other commitments, gardening and messing around, mm -hmm. house repairs, mm -hmm. the usual. I imagine that some of those other activities come into this though. I mean, especially house repairs and gardening and stuff. Mm -hmm. isn't, uh, isn't that physical activity carry over into the physical activity of making your sculptures or your paintings? Isn't it sort of sort of the same, only different, or is it very much different at all? Well, sometimes it can be very similar, if, like if you're painting walls or you're doing a, there's a hole in the wall that needs plaster or something. So it yeah. relates quite a bit to uh, the artwork. 
Mm -hmm. Some of the skills that I've had as, as an artist actually are usable, you know, around the house. Uh, I know how to handle a screwdriver and a hammer and nail. <laughs> yeah, epoxy right. and stuff and like glues, that. And glues, yeah. I'm yeah. really good with glues. Glue. Yeah. <laughs> Tapes. What uh, else do we have? One more question? Yeah, one more question would be great. Do you work on several things at a time? I do. Often uh, multiples. It could be usually no more than like four or five at one time. So, I mean, I might have more than four or five out on tables or around the room or on the walls. And uh, I'm always looking at them, even if I'm not attacking it at the moment. I, I'd be uh, looking for things that I, that I either want to change or repair or whatever. Uh, Have you seen anything in here you want to go back into? Uh, that you just... Maybe not any with the red dots. They, they probably yeah, well that's, always, <laughs> that's when I know that things are actually done, is when they leave the... Uh, you can't get the to studio, them yeah, there's no more, no way to, Because uh, I think, I think when I, we were talking about the red legs before, you said, oh, I don't know, I might go into that one again yeah. a little. Yeah. And I said, oh no, I think it's perfect. <laughs> it isn't sold yet, so you can do something. I can, yeah. 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 I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Ellen, can you hear so, me? Are we done, Eric? I think so. Susan Hale just says that she likes all the interesting found objects that you use in your, in your sculptures, so. Well, thank you, Susan. And, uh, yeah, let's have a you look. So, um, so I guess that we we're happy ahead. to have had you, and it's been fun talking to all of our friends. It's sort of like a Christmas card from us here in the mm -hmm. Center for Spiritual Care to you, wherever you are. Merry Christmas to all. And to all. Same to you. <laughs> thank you so much. You see the slide there? This has been it's great. To you by the Center for oh Spiritual yeah, Care. of course. And 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 it's a happy holidays from the Center for Spiritual Care. And join us again. We're going to be doing more of this and maybe even with fewer glitches next time. And we'd love for you to stop by. Um, it's by appointment only. Mm -hmm. And the number and information is on the screen. Excellent. So Thank can everybody you. see that? Can nope. you see the screen? Nope. Let me share that with you. We know where to find it. <laughs> so there is the information. Excellent. For people who want to uh, come and see the show, they can call the number on the screen and make arrangements to come and visit in person and see this amazing work live. The show will be up through December 30th. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone.